Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to Elam Wimbledon. Uh, yeah, that's a good place to clap. Come on, let's welcome the Holy Spirit this morning. Welcome to you um, as everyone else arrives. Sorry we're a little bit late getting started. We had a, the big church festival the last couple of days and everyone's on a bit of a go slow this morning. But who knows, God's going to move in this house as everyone else arrives that God is never on a go slow. He is always on time. Amen. Will you stand with me? I just want to read this scripture to kick us off this morning. It's in Acts chapter 2, verse 2. It says, suddenly, everyone say suddenly. suddenly. A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And it says... But some people said they're drunk. And these people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Everyone say all people. people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. And Father, we pray today, this Pentecost Sunday, that you'd pour out your spirit on all flesh. Father, we pray this day that once more you would shake the heavens and the earth, that you would shake us in this place. We pray for that violent rushing wind of your spirit, your ruach to blow into this house this morning and that people would speak in other tongues as tongues of fire settle upon every head this morning. Father, we pray for your power and your anointing to be in this house. Father, we thank you that where the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. And Lord, we pray for the Spirit of God to rise up on the inside of every heart this morning and that we would engage with the realm of the Spirit, that angels would ascend and descend in this house, that this would be an open heaven this morning and that as we worship, your glory would fill the temple. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your glory fill every temple in this house, every life in this house this morning, that we'd be undone in your presence today. Jesus, we invite you to come in. Walk amongst the lampstands today, Jesus. Walk amongst us in this place that we would know that you're here in our midst. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for all you're going to do today. We are expectant for a personal Pentecost in this house. We're expectant for a personal touch from heaven for every life today. That it wouldn't be religion, it wouldn't be singing songs but it'd be meeting with the King in heaven and that we'd never be the same again in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let me try that again. Everyone said, Amen. Let's worship. Good morning, Eden Wimbledon. How are we all doing? Why don't you turn to five people around you, give them a high five and say, Welcome to Pentecost. Five people, come on, five people. Just tap your hands. Simple song. Roaring with power and fighting a battle. Every 
open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord?
there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can come here. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen all the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free, I'm a shameless son.
just cry out holy. Tell him how worthy he is. Tell him how holy he is. We join the angels. We join the elders. And we say holy is the Lord.
Yesterday, we need it tomorrow, Lord. We need it every day, 24 7. We just want to be in your presence, Lord. How good is it to be in God's presence all the time? Because, look, we know when we're in your, His presence, everything changes, miracles happen. God moves in your life, He moves the mountains when you're in the presence. Giants will fall in His presence. Your stumbling blocks will move in His presence. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence here today, oh God. Lord, I thank you that you've come to be with us, that you're here in the room. Father, Lord, that you love it when you hear our worship to you, oh God. Lord, when we sing praises to your name, you come, Lord. Father, we love you. You're so awesome. God, you are so majestic, Lord. Father, we love you. Just tell him you love him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. How awesome was that this morning? Let's just give them some praise, some love. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Oh, how are we all today? Feeling good, refreshed, raring to go? I know we've had such an awesome time at um, Big Church Festival, and I know some of you are tired, but hey, that's not going to stop us from praising God. Amen? Amen. If you want to take your seats. I just want to welcome any new guests here this morning. If you're new... Just give me a wave. I just want to say blessings to you. Welcome to Ealing Wimbledon. Love to have you here. We do have connect cards at the back of the seat. If you want to fill them out and um, want us to get to know you, and we will send you a text, say hi, and um, get you connected. And we just say welcome. Uh, we just pray that you'd have an awesome morning. I know um, John's got a, an awesome word. He's going to bring the fire today, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I have got a few notices. Um, next Sunday, um, we have uh, the barbecue at the Mance. That's my house, if you don't know, the Mance on Saturday. Next Saturday, barbecue at the Mance. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's my house. <laughs> it's just called the Mance. At 4 o'clock. Please pray for good weather. We need a good weather for a barbecue. So if you would like to come, just turn up. You don't need to be invited. I'm inviting you all to come and have barbecue fellowship. We'll have a great time. Bring some meat, some food if you want to bring. Maybe a chair. Anything else? Oh, okay. So we will send out a text on Prayer Shield with all the info on directions how to get there. If you are not on Prayer Shield. Get on it, because <laughs> that's where you'll find everything. Please see a member of the team, and they will get you added. Um, normally, you'll find them at the door. 
and we will add you to the tech service. Also, next Sunday, we have baptisms. Woo! If you would like to get baptised, come see Pastor John or myself. After the service, we will add you and we will dunk you, get you cleansed. Amen. <laughs> We also have um, Julie Lopez on the 19th of June. She is coming to the house and she will be with us. Um, very prophetic. Don't want to miss it. I'm sure God's going to speak to you all. Uh, we also have Ruby's Celebration of Life on Friday, the 17th of June. There she is, beautiful Ruby. We are going to just give her our love, pray for the celebration of her life, honour her, and that will be here at 11 o'clock. There is a dress code, come as brightly coloured as you can. We want her to see us from there. So we just pray. We want to bless Ruby on Friday the 17th of June. Amen. I think that's all the notices. Okay. So it is our time of giving to God, and I was just praying about the offering, and I, I just, giving back to God is an act of love. And funny enough, this morning I was given a gift. And it just reminded me actually how it made me feel so joyous. Like I love receiving gifts. And I know God does too. And I know sometimes we say, why do we give back to God when he give it in the first place? But it was an act, it's an act of heart of love. It's a, it's a love offering to God. And so we give back to God because it reminds us of actually how much he's blessed us. And so I know that giving is contagious. Generosity is contagious. We, we got told once that um, we're too generous. I mean, who could be too generous? We love to give because why? Because we've been blessed back. Like we give because we know God's going to bless us back. We've seen it throughout our lives. And so this morning, I just want you to prepare your hearts um, in love prepare them that actually to give back to God because that's what God likes to receive gifts even though he's given them us in the first place and so I just want to pray over you and I I just lift everybody up here this morning Lord and I just pray that you just prepare our hearts to give to you oh God Father Lord we want to be a generous church oh God Lord we want to give back to you because why you've given us so much so freely and so Father I just pray that as we give this morning Father Lord you will multiply that you will give in abundance, oh God, that we will give out of love, oh God, that we will give, oh God, in a heart to receive back more. And so, Father, Lord, we just come before you and we give you our offering. We give you our love tithes this morning, oh God, in your mighty name, Lord. Amen. Let's stand as we give. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow for the ancient of days. Lift your voice in blessing. Glory and power be 
for the word of God I am let's just sta- let's just stay standing because I just want to honor Pastor John this morning and it's my privilege to welcome him to the stage because he's going to bring an awesome word from God so let's just give him some love some praise as he comes to give us the word this morning amen hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus in this house? Am I with some people who love Jesus? If you love Jesus, just give him a shout of praise. Come on. Ha. Yeah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Ah, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and do what you want to do in this place right now, Holy Spirit. We honor your presence. We don't take it for granted. Not here for religion, Lord. We're here for you. We're not in a hurry. Spend our whole lives in a hurry. Refuse to do it in church. We refuse. To rush moments in your presence. Find a moment in your heart right now. Just find that moment. You find his presence in this moment. He's there in your heart right now. Everything else fades away. Everything else falls away. A moment. Find this moment. Find 
Find yourself in this moment, not in what's coming later, not in what's been before, but finding yourself in this moment in His presence. back to our first love bring us back Lord bring us back Lord bring us back to our first love take us back to our first love our one desire is you Lord Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. Ty, come and help me a moment. Our one desire is you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. So bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take, Take us, us back, back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. Take us back to our first love. One desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Our one desire is you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Our one desire is you. Father, we pray for every heart in this house this morning that you bring them back to first love. Bring them back to first love. One desire, this one thing I seek that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life. Father, wherever there's been backsliding tonight, we pray that you forward slide us into your presence. We pray for forward sliding in this house into your purposes, an acceleration of your kingdom in our lives, radical desire for the presence, supernatural obedience in this house to your voice. We'd fall in love afresh. Father, I pray for an awakening of love in this house this morning. Be our one desire in this place. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, 
Amen. You can take your seats. Yeah, come on, let's just give the Lord one more clap. Thank you. If you stay with me, Jeffrey, I feel more anointed when Jeffrey's playing on the keys with me. <laughs> you got your Bibles, turn with me to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. I don't have notes this morning, but I have lots of Bible verses. We're going to see where the Lord takes us. Leviticus chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 8. It says this, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar throughout the night till morning and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. Let me say that again. The fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his linen and with linen undergarments next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and place them beside the altar. Verse 12, and the fire on the altar must be kept burning. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning. Just say that with me. The fire must be kept burning. Fire must be kept on the altar continuously, it must not go out. Father, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation this morning. Father, we pray that you speak to us this Pentecost Sunday. More than just words from a man, but we pray for a message from God. We pray for an impartation of the Spirit in this house this morning, that this message would move us, not just tickle our ears, not just meet our minds, but we pray that this message would break our hearts open for your presence. Let the fire on the altar of our hearts never burn out. Let the fire on every heart in this house never burn out in Jesus name I was prophesying over Serena um, a couple of weeks ago Serena give everyone a wave yeah give Serena a round of applause and the Lord just put a message on my heart and as I was praying for her I was prophesying and, and the words came out of my mouth like this I said to her I said the Lord is calling you in this season to build an altar unto the Lord. And um, as I began to prophesy, I knew the Lord was not just speaking to Serena, but the Lord was speaking to me and He was speaking to all of us in this house. That God is calling us in this season to build an altar. Build an altar. And the thing with the altar was, the altar was the place of divine transaction. It was the place where earth met heaven. It was a place where, uh, uh, where, where God could move in. And the altar represented sacrifice. It represented something being given unto God and then God moving heaven and earth into that place. Can I tell you this morning that I believe that God is looking for an altar here in Ealing Wimbledon looking for a place that we'd build him, a place of divine transaction where heaven can come down. And the thing with biblical altars is this, the fire was always produced supernaturally. Oh, I don't know if you're hearing me this morning. No one ever took their cigarette lighter and lit the fire upon the altar. No one ever struck a match and lit the fire upon the altar. The fire would fall supernaturally from heaven. Amen. And can I tell you this Pentecost Sunday that God 
wants to pour fire out upon your life. He wants a supernatural flame to come upon your head in this house. Like in the book of Acts when the Spirit was poured out on Pentecost. He wants the same flame upon the altar of your heart. But the fire, the fire was never to go out. And there was a responsibility upon the priest to maintain the fire. Can I tell you this morning that the fire of God in your life is provided supernaturally. But the maintenance of the fire is your responsibility. There's a priest of God, it's your responsibility to put wood every day upon the fire. It's your responsibility every day to cultivate and mature the presence of God upon your life. Don't ever let the fire of God go out. Some of you, maybe you're, you've just got a small ember burning. That's all that's left upon the altar of your heart. And I want to tell you this morning, it's time to come back to your first love. It's time to fan the flames of revival in your heart again. It's time to let the fire begin to grow upon the altar. Come with me, Genesis. We're going somewhere. Jesus. Genesis 13. Jesus. I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. And from the Negev he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. He comes to Bethel, the place where he first built an altar. And throughout the life of Abraham, we see him building altars unto the Lord. In fact, Abraham's encounters always came through an an altar. Isaac, he didn't build altars, he redug wells. But who knows that sometimes you need to redig the wells of your forefathers. And there are times for an altar, but there's a time for redigging of what is already there. Jacob, he just had encounters. For one generation it was altars, for another it was wells. And for this third generation it was encounters with the Holy Spirit. There's a place of encounter here this morning. Presence is heavy. Abram builds an altar in Bethel. Turn with me now, Genesis. 28, Genesis 28, verse 10, it says this, Jacob left Bathsheba and set out for Haram. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. And taking one of the stones there, He put it under his head and laid down to sleep. And he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. And I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I'll bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I've done what I promised you. And when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. 
Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he'd placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Bethel. Here's the thought I have for you this morning is that when Jacob came to that place and he picked up a pillar, I don't believe he picked up any stone. I believe he picked up a stone of his forefather Abraham, a stone of his altar, and he used it as a pillar. That the stone he led upon was the altar that previously Abraham had used to engage with heaven, which is why when Jacob was sleeping, he was not sleeping on any stone. He was sleeping on the altar of his grandfather. And he has an open heaven experience. He experiences the gateway of heaven. Why? Because it was not his altar. He was stepping into his previous generation's altar. Can I tell you, church, when we build altars in our life unto God, it's not just for us, it's for generations to come. That our future generations will sleep upon the altars which we have built in our lives. I believe we're building an altar here in Elam Wimbledon. How do, you say, Pastor John, how do we build an altar? When we pray, when we worship, we're placing uh, an environment where there can be a divine transaction. The New Testament altar is not made out of stones. The New Testament altar is our heart. Oh, you're hearing me. And God wants to send the fire upon the altar of your heart again in this house this morning. Some of you are cold. But I want to tell you, if you'll build an altar this morning, He's going to send the fire. I want to tell you, if you'll position your heart, maybe some of you, you need to tap into previous generations. You need to redig some ancient wells. There's some, some, some history in your family this morning. Maybe it's a father, maybe it's a mother. Let me ask a question. Who has a godly mother in this place? If you've got a godly mother, give me a wave. If you've got a godly father, give me a wave. If you've got a godly grandparents, anyone got any godly grandparents? What about any great grandparents? Anyone out there? I want to tell you that there are some generations that have gone before you. And what you are experiencing is not just the fruit of your life. You are experiencing the fruit of the generations that have gone before you. God says this. He says, I'll bless you, David, for a thousand generations. You say, well, I've got no heritage. Well, I want to tell you, you are paving a way for generations to come in your name. Build an altar. Build an altar unto the Lord. Who knows in this nation there are demonic altars. We're going to see it in a moment. But the the, the altar is not just about heaven coming down, but there is... That there is access for hell. There is a demonic agenda and a demonic altar that wants to do things in this nation. Jacob says, this is none other than the gate of heaven. What did Jesus say? Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of what? Hell, hell shall not prevail. Can I tell you there are gates of heaven and there are gates of hell. Yes. But when we build an altar unto God... We create an access point to the gate of heaven. When we pray and we seek God, we are creating space for heaven to invade the earth. We don't play at church. We don't come here to play. We don't come here to go through the motions, tick our Sunday morning box. We come here to create something in the realm of the Spirit. To build an altar, brick by brick, every life gathering together, building an altar unto God where we say, we're building you a place where you can come, Jesus. The altar, that's where you meet us, the altar. Come with me. One Kings.
1 Kings 17. Ha. Uh, Jesus. 1 Kings 18, sorry. 18. Ha. Uh, verse 20. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. And Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And the people said nothing. And Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 150 prophets Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. And then you call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. Let me say that again. The God who answers by fire, He is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls, prepare it for first, since there were so many of you, call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull, given them and prepared it. And then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. I would love to have been there. (laughs) Dancing around the fire, calling to a God made of wood and gold who is no God. Baal, answer us, they shouted, but there was no response. And no one answered and they danced around the altar they had made. Are you hearing me? At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he's deep in thought. Perhaps he's busy or traveling. I love Elijah, man. He's my kind of preacher. Maybe he's asleep and must be awakened. Check these dudes out. So they shouted louder and they slashed themselves with swords and spears. As that was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying. Until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Are you hearing this? Can I tell you there are demonic altars with demonic agendas? And there are false gods. And there are some altars in your life that you're going to need to tear down. If we were to look at Gideon, Gideon came and tore down his father's altar. And there are some things that you need to get out of your life this morning. There are some altars that are built up over the years. There are some things that have become a worship idol in your life that are not God. And they will not produce in your life. Can you pass me my umbrella a minute? I had a prophetic picture. If you were with us at Big Church Festival this weekend, you know where I received the inspiration. But I felt the Lord speak to me like this, that for some of you, The Holy Spirit is raining down in this place. But you're not receiving because there's things that are blocking what God wants to do in your life. For some of you, it's unforgiveness. For some of you, it's it's sin. For some of you, it's, it's false God. It's idols. It's things you build up over the time. And I hear the Lord speaking 
And he's saying it's time to bring it down. It's time to bring it down. Whatever is blocking you, it's time to bring it down and to let the rain of the Spirit fall upon your life. There can be no blockages, no hindrances. It's time to dance in the rain. Just tell the person next to you, dance in the rain. I don't know what's blocking. I don't know what's hindering, but hear me, take it down this morning. And there is no shame. There's no shame. You don't need to beat yourself up. You just need to take it down. Everyone say it with me. Say, take it down. Take it down. And there are altars that you need to take down in the name of the Lord. Things that have been built up in your life that you need to say, enough is enough. It may have been okay for my forefathers, but it's not okay for me. I need to repent this morning. I'm going to be honest with you. I need to repent. I had something take place with one of my daughters this week. and Lord really challenged my heart and I was like God forgive me and we sometimes like to go out and get some food at Abbey Mills anyone know Abbey Mills nice carvery bit of chicken thank you Jesus oh I'm gone now oh come back I like Abbey Mills but we'd go there sometimes and there was a bit of a stall and there was some stones just different colored stones and Gracie Beth would like to get a stone and I'd kind of just said, yes, okay. And it become like a crystal and a this and a that. And we were driving in the car and we've been doing a bit of discipleship together. I've been discipling my daughter and just, we said, she shows how busy I am. She said, dad, can I book a pastoral with you? And so she's arranged to come and see me on Tuesday. She was like, I'm coming. And she says, but I'm not coming as my dad. I'm coming as, as pastor. <laughs> and so she, she comes from school and she comes to the office and we sit down and we do a little pastoral together. And um, we've been sharing about the Bible and we've been talking about the things of God. And I've just been trying to help her with her self-esteem and different things. And we're driving home from the pastoral. And out of the blue, she says to me, She says, Dad, I really feel I need to throw those crystals away because I feel they're bringing something not good into my life. Ten years old. Can I tell you the conviction of God that came upon me for allowing that into her life? For allowing that into my house? I was like, John, where have you been for the last few years? I was like, what, where, 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 what are you, why have you allowed the altar to come to pieces in your house? Why have you allowed the fire to dim upon your heart? And I've, been, I've been in a good place by some of your standards. Let's be real about it. But I was convicted but, and it made me go, God. I need to build an altar in my house. I need some fire again in my life. I need to not allow the enemy to have any room into my family. And there's some things you're tolerating. Maybe there's some programs that you need to just start to raise your standards again. Maybe there's some things that you need to go back through your house and go, you know what? It's time to clean house again. Demonic altars that need pulling down. Come back to the text. Ha. Verse 30. And then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. And they came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. I don't know what the state of your altar is this morning, but I want you to take a moment to just, just receive that altar just for a moment. Check your altar. As it come down, there's time to build it back up again. And Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes, descending from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. 
And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two seers of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. And then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Who knows if God's going to do the impossible, you may as well make it even more impossible. If God's going to send fire, you may as well take any doubt out of people's minds. So he pours a bunch of water on it. He must have heard the Lord. That's all I can say. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. And at the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. And then... Everyone say them. Then. The fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and it also licked up the water in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Can I tell you, God does not need you to spend four hours dancing around, prophesying frenetically. He doesn't need you to whip and beat yourself. He just needs a prayer, prayed up in faith. He just needs someone who believes and you can pray simply and His fire will fall upon the altar. He just needs someone who will say, I'm building an altar to the Lord. I'm repairing my altar. Now send the fire. Mashende he, masanda boshende he. Kura masanda boshanda mahanda be he. Acts chapter two. We're going to finish Acts chapter two. Ah. Fifty days since the day of Pentecost. Fifty days since Jesus had been taken up into heaven, because who knows Jesus? A man who was God, God man. God stepped down from heaven into this man, Jesus Christ. Born in a manger, born in a stable, left his throne and humbled himself, took on human form, lived a perfect life, died upon a cross, buried and yet rose again from the dead. His last words were to his disciples and he said this, he said, stay in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. 50 days, 50 days since that moment when he said, stay, wait until you receive power. What were they doing for 50 days? Building an altar. Building an altar. An upper room altar, what was it? It was prayer, it was worship. They were preparing their hearts. Some of you, it's not going to be about Sunday morning. Some of you in this season, it's not going to be about gatherings. It's going to be about times at home where you're building an altar, an unseen altar to the Lord. Preparing your hearts, waiting until you receive power from heaven. John the Baptist said this, he said, there is one who is coming after me 
who will not baptize you in water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. Chapter 2, Acts, verse 1, it says this, And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues. They built an altar. And the Lord sent the fire. They built an altar and the Lord sent the fire. Church, I don't know if you're hearing the message today. The Lord's calling us in this season. To build an altar. Build an altar in prayer. Build an altar of worship. That He would send the fire down again upon our hearts. Time to tear down the old altars. It's time to tear down the false gods. It's time to build an altar again. And your altar may be rubble, it may be ruins, but as long as there's stones, I want to tell you if you build them, there will still be access to the realm of the Spirit. If you'll just fan that flame, I want to tell you there is still a fire that is inside of your heart. It's not gone out yet. And there may have been water poured all over it. But I want to tell you, He is still the God who answers by fire. He's still the God who answers by fire. And so Father, we pray today. Build us an altar upon our hearts today. Build us an access point. Build us a gate in the realm of the Spirit where angels can ascend and descend through us that we would be Jacob's ladder. Like Jesus said, uh, uh, angels are ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. We thank you that He was a gateway. He was the door. He was the altar. And we come to the altar this morning. We come to you, Jesus. And we're asking for fire. We're asking for fire in this house. For you're the God who answers by fire. You're the God who answers by fire. Jesus, worship team, if you come. I'm not going to ask you to respond, but I am going to ask you to do something in your heart. If you've got an altar that needs tearing down, I want you to tear it down right now. Take it down right now. Unforgiveness. Tear it down. Unbelief. Tear it down. Cynicism. Tear it down. Sin. Bring it down. Things that you're doing, you know you shouldn't be doing. If you're worshipping money, it's time to tear it down. You're worshipping your job, it's time to tear it down. No room for false old idols right now in this moment. It's a moment of repentance right now. We tear down the altars of our forefathers. We tear down every other God that we've worshipped, even unknowingly. We bring it down this morning in your presence. And we begin to build an altar unto you, Lord. That's it. Just begin to lift your voices now. Just begin to pray. Prepare an altar in your heart right now. Wait for the fire. Just begin to pray. Begin to seek Him right now. Build that altar upon your heart right now in this moment. An access point to the realm of the Spirit. Send your fire, Jesus. Send your fire, Lord. Send your fire, God. Yeah, come on, just sing something for me. Jesus. Come down. 
Reveal your glory right now, your Shekinah glory. Come down, fire, come down. 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 Oh Lord, make me a house. Make me The fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. Let the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Let the fire on my altar never burn out. The fire on my altar never burn out. Let the fire on my altar never burn out. Let the fire on my
Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the place where heaven can reach down into the earth. We thank you for the altar of Jesus Christ. We come to you, Lord Jesus, our mediator between heaven and earth. We thank you that we have access into the realm of the spirit because of your shed blood. And this morning we repent of every obstacle that's held us back. We repent of every hindrance that's held us back. And we build fresh altars in our life this morning. We restore the ancient ruins. We build a house of prayer in our hearts today, God. We say, send the fire. 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 We're going to do one more thing. We're going to finish. I want you to reach out and grab someone next to you. Grab their hand. Find someone. Wow. Wow. This is, this is, you know, when you build an altar, it's just the love of Christ begins to move. It's an intimate moment. One another. I want you just to begin to pray for that person. Just pray for the fire for them right now. Maybe love on them. You do what you feel you need to do, but just love on them. Prophesy into them. Speak into their being right now. The love of Christ. Holy Spirit, flow right now into every life. Holy Ghost. Send the fire to them, Jesus, right now. Just lift your voices, keep going, press in for them. They need your prayers more than you could ever realize. Press in for them. Some of you, this is your awakening moment. Some of you this morning, you're going to look back and say, wow, it, it just went up a level in my life. The Ark of the Covenant that dwelled in the tabernacle. There was two cherubim that faced one another on top of the Ark. It was the representation of God's presence to the Israelites. There was a flame that dwelt between the two cherubim. It was the Shekinah glory. Our God is a consuming fire. He dwells between the angelics around his throne night and day. Seraphim, cherubim, the angelic host, declaring holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Our God is a fire. Consuming fire. Send the fire, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Can we give the Lord a clap? Can we just honor him just for a moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to finish. If you want to receive prayer this morning, you can just come up. I'm going to invite our ministry team just to come and pray for people. So if you want prayer this morning, you can get that. Uh, but I'm going to release you. Uh, just to say, Growth Track is week four. And so if you're on Growth Track, I know it's hard to transition from this into Growth Track, but head upstairs, our leaders as well. You obviously need it on week four of Growth Track. I just want to bless you this morning. We reach out a hand all across this place. I see the spirit all over loads of people right now. Ah. And may the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. This is just the beginning. And as you build an altar to God in your life, He will do above all that you can ask or imagine. Maybe not the things you would have desired six months ago, but as the altar of God moves in your life, the desire for the things of heaven are going to grow stronger. And He's going to meet every desire, every longing of your heart. God, the altar of your heart. For from it flow the wellsprings of life. So Father, we thank you. We bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, yeah, give the Lord one more clap. Hang around for some tea and coffee. We'll see you next time. Thank you.